Hello YouTubes, welcome back to another video. Here you can watch me build all of this stuff to make this motor turn. And also we have a look at this little Chinese micro step driver. We'll open it up, see what's inside, see how it works. So this is one of these little uh, micro step drivers that you can get on eBay or Amazon or wherever you go to buy this kind of shit. There's a little pack that I bought, so it's a stepper motor together with this little driver. We can have a look on the outside first before we get too far into it. Plastic is uh, typical Chinese. It's even got the Chinese funk smell to it and this font. I don't know if you guys have looked at Chinese stuff before, but whenever there are Latin characters on Chinese stuff, it always uses this font. I didn't even talk about what this is really, did I? This is a little driver board, basically, that lets you drive stepper motors. It's a micro step driver, so that's the, the kind of the nicest way to drive a step motor. Basically, what's inside of it is some kind of driver with an output stage, but you give it an enable signal, a direction signal, and then a pulse. Then you can set it here for how many steps you want, so how many pulses per revolution with these settings here which are set on these dip switches up here the bottom sets the current of the motor just as a note if you do end up buying it um, there is no information provided with this motor so going back um, there's a big heat sink on the back basically it's an extruded piece of aluminum it's got this profile here they push that through a die and then cut it off into these lengths then i guess that they either yeah, I guess they come in here with a with a mill and mill out these two little mounting screw or mounting uh, bolt points and then they probably anodize it. So this looks like it's anodized. Yeah, I would say it's anodized. And after that, they come in and drill these four holes for the cover and PCB mounting. For the the interface to the motor, so there's these terminal blocks there. Rui Xing, yeah, it's some kind of Chinese company that produces these. Uh, there are good ones of these, but these are not good ones. They are, however, rated for 300 volts and 15 amps. Right. I don't think 300 volts and 15 amps is going to go through that conductor without vaporizing it. And then it says it runs from 9 to 42 volts DC. So, let's get in here and see which horrors await us. So, let's get this zoomed in a little bit here. There we go. So, it looks like the main driving IC or the IC that's doing all of the thinking stuff is behind this on the back side of the board. I don't know if you can see it there. There inside, there's the heat sink coming from that IC going to the big heat sink. And that I see should sit on the bottom side of the board. So we'll have a look at what that is in a minute. But first, let's just go through this. The PCB and the silk screen looks decent. Yeah, not much to say about that. The soldering looks also decent. Most of it. So all of the components, all of the small SMD components, which are done on the pick and place look, the pick and place with the reflow look pretty good. The components here, for example, the caps, the resistors, they are done by hand. The same with these green jumpers. It looks quite horrid. Um, on the caps here, there's not enough solder, so there's actually a kind of void in the via. So these are these parts are done by hand, and they're not really beautiful. The same with the dip switches done by hand. The LED, so this little block is kind of crooked and all sidewards in here. Uh, no conformal coating. So if you put this on a 3D printer, okay, not a big deal. If you put this on a CNC machine, which you use to cut, for example, metal, and you get some metal dust in here because this grate is, or this uh, cover has holes in it for I don't know which reason, because there's a giant heat sink on it, but holes. Um, all the dust can go in there and make your electronics unhappy. If we follow the circuit a little bit, let's just see what's going on here. Um, 
voltage and ground come in here uh, it's even labeled vcc and gnd i guess these are some kind of reverse polarity diodes then we come into some big buffer caps honestly don't know what these two power resistors are for perhaps to measure the current probably to measure the current so that this thing knows what's what's going on because you can set the currents then we've got a couple of ic's here that's a 555 timer interestingly enough i don't know what they're doing with that this little section here which is all the i guess the io you can call it so all these enable direction pulse inputs there we go which live here are coming into this area i guess these look like optocouplers i don't know what that is let's google it okay after a little bit of uh googling this is really weird so these are optocouplers and this is also an optocoupler i have no idea why they're using different ones and even more interesting if you look real close here this pin and this pin are not only not connected but they don't even have a pad on the pcb so they're just kind of floating there on the pcb i've never seen that before Usually when you have a not connected pin, you still solder it down onto a pad. You don't just leave it flapping in the breeze. So there's three optocouplers, I guess one for the enable, one for the direction, one for the pulse. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. This little standoff supposed to be holding the PCB is not screwed in all the way. And the PCB is just kind of, it's kind of hanging out there. So that's, that's cool. Okay um yeah let's get this pcb off and see if we can see what the main controller chip is so on this side nothing really remarkable a couple of little bushings here and then these little standoffs and a little thermal pad sticking this block of aluminum onto the heatsink and then there's some thermal compounds to interface it with the ic that's on the pcb yeah so the pcb itself is it's not bad Let's get the gunk off of that so we can see what's inside. Make sure to take the dirtiest, most disgusting rag you have to do these kind of things. Not even sure we're going to be able to see what that is. It's probably got the numbers all ground off of it. Oh no, there are numbers. There are the numbers if you want to search on it, search it yourself. Toshiba Stepping Motor Driver IC. Seems like the right device. Yeah, yeah, that looks correct. Yeah, I can't read that, but PWM, 50 volts, 4 amps, around 50 volts, 4 amps output. Okay, so far it fits. Seems like it's the right part. So uh, maybe there's an application circuit. Hey, look at that. Hmm. There's two. There's a clock pin here, which I presume is the... So I guess this side here is is this stuff, what we have as the inputs. So there's a... I guess that's clockwise counterclockwise the clock which i assume is the pulse resets and enable kind of makes sense i guess this d mode is probably d mode driver mode maybe it should be maybe this top section to select switching pattern we want looks like h bridge h bridge or sb what is rsa and rsb don't know then there's some outputs for the motor error outputs i guess that goes to the little red lights then there's motor oscillator oscillator m i guess that's what they're using the little 555 chip for they probably create some kind of probably running in some kind of a stable oscillation mode then current reference setting that's probably these down here oh, okay so rs the pins the rs pins are the power for the output stage High side fat, low side fat, um, and then the two outputs. So the phase goes here in between. Then you have a ground and the power. This driver uses micro stepping. So here you have your clock running along the top. And on each clock edge, they adjust the current out in a percentage a little bit such that the resulting waveform out, so the resulting current and therefore voltage that goes to the motor is a kind of sine wave, therefore making it nice and smooth well there we go i'm not going to get too detailed into this this looks like a decent chip it's from toshiba 
um, for a cheap little Chinese piece of crap thing like this for them to actually use a Toshiba chip is good. So let's put this thing back together and see if we can't let the smoke out. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. With the black wires kind of like pinched on the side of this connector between the motor casing and the connector. That's that's not good. I don't have any multimeter here, so I don't know which of these four wires belongs to phase A and phase B, but I can show you how to figure that out without a multimeter. If you spin it now, it spins freely. And if we take two of these and short them together, if you capture one from phase B and one from phase A, nothing will happen. It'll still spin freely. So let's try these two. Nothing happens. So these are obviously phase A and B. And if we take now one of these with one of the other wires, basically what's going to happen, it's going to get hard to spin if you short one phase. B. There we go. See the difference? Now it's hard to now it's hard to spin. So this is one phase. And now if we short these two together, that's the other phase. We need to build a little circuit to provide us a pulse. And these are actually interesting. I don't really understand this. So there's enable minus enable plus. So these look like differential pairs actually. Okay, fine. I'll go inside and get my multimeter. So enable minus and direction minus. Yeah, they're open. And to the main ground. Yeah, okay, so these are all differential pairs. They're completely open. Zero volts between these two. And the other direction, you should have five here reference to this. That's what I'm gonna try anyways. That's what it looks like. Input to five volts here, you get this thing to step. Actually, I already got a 555 chip built up here, but I don't have a data sheet or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kind of try it. And if it doesn't work, we're going to swap one. It's not going to hurt it. If you put it in backwards, it'll just not work. Good enough for me. Okay, a little explanation here. Um, there's my 555. I've got a little potentiometer here to control the frequency of the output here. The output is here on this resistor here. Plus, then we need a pulse minus, which will use the global ground. Good. Then we need power, 9 to 42 volts. Uh, we need an enable signal, otherwise it won't enable. Um, I've got a couple linear regulators here. So this is a um, 18 volts and this is a 12 volt. So we're going to put here around 20 volts. This thing will be happy with 20 volts. This thing is running on 12 volts. Unfortunately, I don't have a 5 volt. Let's build up another one of these. For Sorry, I know this is the nicest circuit you've ever seen, but... That's how we work on this channel. Beautiful. Look at that. There. And now I hope this doesn't explode. So that should be our 5 volts. Now the 5 volts need to go here. But first I would test all this garbage so that we don't burn this down. It's pulling, by the way, half an amp. And I think most of that is coming from this device here. Yeah, that's a lot of current. Ah, it's because the motor is... It's blocking the motor, so it's actually got an output. We're driving current through the motor at the moment. That's why it's pulling so much. Hey, look at that. Five volts. That's good. Um, I think the direction, let's just leave it open. So it does, we don't care which direction it goes. The enable, I think we do have to do something about. So let's connect. Watch me burn down electronics. Maybe that's what we can title this series. Up in flames. So now we have zero volts on enable. I expect the motor to not be powered now. If this is all working how it should be. Yet it still is. That's strange. That should be active high then. So let's try to connect this to 5 volts. Uh, do we need a resistor? Let's put a resistor there just in case. Just in case so it doesn't pull a lot of current. Yeah, okay, it's active high. So when I put that there, then the motor is free. And the enable, when there's zero volts across the enable, then the motor blocks, which means it is active high. Now we have to solve this little problem. Um, let's see which frequency we have on our, on our little 555 I see here. Oh boy, I don't know what the input voltage is there. 
Okay, what do we have? We have three hertz, so it should be working, but slowly. Okay, so now we have a little voltage divider. Can measure the voltage here. It needs five volts. I don't know, it looks good enough, right? So where's our enable in here, right? Pulse, five volts plus. Okay, so it should turn now. Well, now we have pulse and then our enable and something should happen. Well, it's switching, but it's not turning. Possible we have one of the coils hooked up backwards. Let's try that. Maybe we could turn the power off before we do this. Okie dokie. Um, this is the only thing I can think of that would do that. Ah, it's actually turning. Okay, how about 10 hertz? 10 hertz sounds good, right? Um, it's doing stuff. It's not making real happy noises. Okay, um, my conclusion from this little experiment. Ah, uh, you can't see the motor. The most important part. Ta-da! It's turning really slowly because our frequency is 10 hertz and clearly this thing needs way more than 10 hertz to drive this because it has, um, what do we have? 200 pulses, I don't know what one pulse here represents in this maybe. I find it really curious that the red light is on and the green light is off because one is labeled power and one is labeled alarm. I would expect power to be green an alarm red or it does have an alarm but then it doesn't have power that doesn't really make sense and it also doesn't change at all if you do if you actually want to use this for like a printer or whatever or or whatever you're going to build with this you need here instead of a five i mean unless your thing is that simple normally you would need here a microcontroller then you can program this thing to do what you want it to do i just wanted to test all this see if it actually works that's why I just use this chip. All right, in all of that excitement, I realized that I never actually drew any kind of schematic or anything useful that you can use and build this if you need to, because this thing completely lacks any documentation. I suppose if you Google around, you can probably find other people who have done this, but because we're already making this video, I'm going to draw a block diagram slash schematic so you can actually do this if you want to. Here, uh, 20 volts from the power supply. So here I've got my DC power supply. That comes into an 18 volt linear regulator. That comes into a 12 volt linear regulator. That comes into a five volt linear regulator. There we have three nets of the three voltages. Then we use a 555 timer in a, a stable oscillation mode to generate the pulse signal that the microstep driver needs. This is how it's hooked up. Um, these two components are setting the timing of the circuit so that you can control the frequency, which I'm doing with my little potentiometer here. The output on pin three of the 555 goes through a voltage divider because I think this chip, I've got it running on 12 volts. So I think this output is a little bit too high for the micro step driver, which needs five volts here. I didn't measure any of this. If you actually implement this in something, you should probably measure this and make sure everything is correct. I just reduced the voltage here by half and put that into the pulse. So then the micro step driver is powered directly from the power supply from 20 volts, connected to the common ground. The motor coils A and B are connected to the driver. And then the three inputs, I've not used them as differential pairs. I've just put the uh, minus on the common ground of the entire circuit. So the pull up is from the, or the pull up, the, the pulse is from the 555 timer. The direction I've just left it floating because for this test, I don't care which direction it's going. And the enable, so the enable is an active high. So that means the output is disabled when this two pins have five volts between them. And I've just connected that with a wire to the five volt net here through a resistor. So I don't know if the transistor in here in this little optocoupler that we saw, if it just shorts and there's no current limitation. And if we put there five volts, we would essentially just short the five volts to ground, thereby burning the little transistor up. So I put there a current limiting resistor and that's it. That's what we got for the circuit. Okay, back to the video. Okie dokie, can you see? You can see. But I don't have 220, so what we're gonna do to in parallel i have no idea if this will work or if we will let the smoke out of this chip and there we go ooh, 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 look at that 
kind of works. 650 hertz. And hold on, let me replace this with a little flippy, flippy doodad. Um, 600, where is, can you see that? You can't even see that. 600, there you go, 600 something. Okay, now I'm going to change my little potentiometer. So we can change the speed here. So this way is faster. This way should be slower. Yeah, that's the max. Oh, that's weird. The multimeter can't do it, man. We need an oscilloscope or something. But whatever, look how much nicer that sounds when it's running that speed. Okay, so this thing needs a pretty high um, frequency to run nicely. Um, there we go. But that's how to make this stuff work. I'm going to build a thing out of this. We're going to put here a microcontroller. We're going to program it. It's going to do cool stuff. Until then, ciao. -y.